Hey guys, this is Noah with Sparksight, and we're here to make video easy. So we're gonna go through some quick tips that you can uh, implement both from a hardware and a software perspective that might improve your performance, in some cases fairly substantially, in both Adobe Premiere and After Effects. As a lot of people that have worked in these programs extensively probably know, they have kind of a reputation online in forums and across the internet for being fairly not that well optimized. By this, I simply mean that while they are incredible programs that have a lot of different features, one of the things that Adobe has not focused very much on in the years of its existence is making sure it is super duper stable and performs very well. However, that is actually changing, and it's fairly timely for our decision to make this video. The most recent update to all of the Creative Cloud apps uh, involves Adobe paying a lot more attention to performance and stability. So there are a couple of tips that are new that are relevant to what's now possible in this new version of Premiere and After Effects. The first thing you can really focus on is to make sure that your drivers, your operating system itself, and the applications that you're using are all up to date using their most recent versions. It's kind of a cliche, but honestly, it's the first thing you should do if you're running into problems like the applications crashing, not starting up, spontaneously disappearing. Those issues are the kinds of things that usually stem from problems that have likely been fixed in newer versions. Though that said, you almost certainly still will run into problems because like I said, these programs are not perfect. Don't take it personally. If you run into crashes and stability issues, it might just be these programs. Moving on to the next part of this, a lot of times the biggest factor in performance is your hardware. What specific components you actually have in your computer. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, some people glamorize the idea of having a whole bunch of CPU cores, like 18, 26 cores, just, just going all crazy with that kind of stuff. But these particular applications, Premiere and After Effects, aren't able to take advantage of a whole bunch of extra cores in the way that a lot of people sometimes think they are. What it really comes down to is just checking out benchmarks online on websites like Puget Systems where they have detailed descriptions of which processors are good for what kinds of things. So what you should do then, in my opinion, if you're in the market for upgrading a component or buying a new computer or laptop, just go onto their website and see how your current system stacks up to whatever currently exists. RAM is also something people like to focus on a lot and say, oh, I need more RAM to increase the performance of my computer or to make it faster. But it's one of, RAM is one of those things where it's not really an issue until you're running out of it. If you aren't approaching the limit of the memory in your computer, then there's a good chance that increasing the amount of memory you have is gonna make no difference on real world performance and the speed of Premiere and After Effects. The way you can determine if if your system is running out of memory, so to speak, is while you're editing and while you're maybe experiencing weird freezes and hitches or whatever it is in your case, if you pull up the Windows Task Manager, which you can do uh, with Control Shift Escape, by default it'll look like this and you have to hit on the More Details button. You slide over to the Performance tab. You'll notice this little thing here that keeps track of your memory that's being used. If this little line is smacking up at the top and hitting 100% all the time, and that's coinciding with when you're having bad performance, you can be pretty confident that the memory is the thing you need to upgrade. I was working on a project once where I only had 16 gigabytes of RAM at the time and I was working in After Effects with a massive amount of footage that was just chewing up everything. And half the times when I would save the project, that thing would spike straight to the top, all my RAM would be used up and then After Effects would crash. And so that was very undesirable. I had to do weird things to split up the project, but it would have also been solved just by increasing the amount of RAM in the computer. So RAM's one of those things that usually doesn't matter until it does. But quite often the biggest bottleneck in performance is storage. Do not, under any circumstances, if you can avoid it, put your project files, your media cache, and Premiere itself all onto the same internal drive. That's a recipe for lots of slowdowns, especially when importing files. Thank me later, try and avoid that. We've mentioned in a previous video that the optimal configuration is to have Pre Premiere and After Effects or your programs and your operating system on one drive, your media cache on another, and your project files on another, but that's not always possible. The main thing is to just get your media cache and your project files off of that main installation drive. If you haven't heard of the media cache before and you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's basically a database of helper files that Premiere automatically generates whenever you import footage. After Effects has a similar thing called the disk cache that it uses for storing uh, versions of RAM previews. This is very helpful for the program to be able to play back things faster and interpret footage faster, but it does take up space. And by default, it's located on wherever your main 
drive is, usually somewhere buried in your sort of user documents folder. This default configuration is not optimal, as we've mentioned before. To change this, what you do is you go into Premiere. I'll, I'll show you both in Premiere and After Effects. In Premiere, you go to Edit, Preferences, and then Media Cache. And there are two options here for your Media Cache files and your Media Cache database. Uh, all you do is hit Browse, find the drive you want to move it to. I have a specific drive dedicated to the Media Cache, but you could put it wherever you need to put it. Uh, and you, I usually create a folder called Media Cache and then just throw everything in there. So I'll click open that folder, hit select, and then Media Cache Database, same thing, open that folder, hit select. They were already located here, so nothing's changing in this case. You don't have to create these Media Cache files. You don't have to create any of that. Just select the folder, it'll do that for you automatically. These should both basically say the same thing. Down here, you'll see a section describing Media Cache Management. So this is the different settings for when it will delete old files. By default, it won't delete any of the old files and it'll just keep piling up until you run out of space. If you have your media cache on a drive that has other stuff on it, like maybe that's where you also have your project files and stuff, then you probably are gonna wanna set this to either automatically delete the cache files when they're older than a certain amount of days, or you can set an, uh, a size limit. So when it reaches a certain size, it'll hit that uh, size limit and then automatically delete the oldest stuff. To change this in After Effects, you go to Edit, Preferences, Media, and Disk Cache. If you already made the changes in Premiere, then the settings should be reflected here under Conform Media Cache. But After Effects has an additional thing called the Disk Cache, which is essentially like a stored version of After Effects' RAM previews. And this you'll want to be probably in the same place that you've put the Media Cache, somewhere else not on your main drive, on a fast drive, a solid state drive if possible. So same thing, choose folder, select the folder you want, hit select, and either delete or move. So moving along with talking about storage, uh, I want to mention where you may be storing your project files themselves. For a lot of editors, it's very convenient to just store their project files on external drives like these, or sometimes much bigger ones, four, six, eight terabyte drives if they have a whole bunch of footage. And this is more convenient sometimes because you can just unplug the drive if you need to move to another computer and then plug it in somewhere else. If you wanted the maximum amount of performance, that would come from making sure all of your project files and footage and media are on some internal drive, in particular, some kind of uh, SATA SSD or an NVMe SSD. This would be the theoretical best possible scenario, but it's not always practical because of, you know, maybe you want to move the files around more often, or maybe you just can't afford or don't have a way of sticking all of your footage onto some massive internal drive. So while there are limitations in terms of speed to using an external drive, in the real world, if you're not using huge, massive, like uh, high bitrate 4K files, or you're not playing back a whole bunch of footage off of the drive at the same time, like you have some multicam set up in Premiere, there's a good chance you won't really notice a difference in performance between having the footage on an external drive or having it on just some internal drive. That said, if you are running into weird hitching playback issues, especially if you have multiple pieces of footage playing at the same time, then yeah, definitely try moving some of that footage to the internal drive and see if that fixes it, because that might be the problem. Also, the speed of the interface, the way that the external drive connects to the computer is really important. If you're using USB 2.0, that's the USB connector without the little blue bit at the end, then please stop. It's not very fast. In fact, it's pales in comparison to the modern standards that we have now. That's definitely gonna be contributing to some slowdown when it, in whatever you're editing. For modern applications, absolutely use at bare minimum USB 3.0. And if you can swing it, there's a lot of newer uh, hard drives and external uh, storage options that use type C connectors as well. Your computer has to support that, but if you're able to use a type C connector, then it's gonna be very, very fast, especially when transferring files to and from the external drive. So maybe you're thinking right now, okay, that's great. That's a lot of great hardware tips, but I can't change any of that. I just need some tips in Premiere itself. And so that's what we're gonna do now. So let's say you're on a timeline like this and you're scrubbing around and you're having problems with Premiere hitching and slowing down and it being almost impossible to play back your edit. It's one of the most frustrating things in the world. If that's the case, most people recommend just turning straight to the playback resolution over here on the program window. And that is gonna help in a lot of cases. You turn this down to one half or one fourth and it's gonna dramatically decrease the number of pixels that Premiere and your computer by extension has to process when playing back. And if this solves your problem right away, then great. But if you have other issues or if you're getting really tired of just rendering or watching your project at a lower resolution than it actually is, there are some other things you can look at. 
The first one being that a major contributor to slowdowns tends to be a whole bunch of effects piling on top of each other. Color correction, the unsharp mask effect I've noticed tends to be really power hungry and other similar things. I learned recently of this awesome feature in Premiere, which I can't believe I didn't know about sooner. While you're in a project, if you go over here to this plus button underneath the program window, it's called the button editor. It brings up a bunch of extra buttons that aren't normally accessible from this little panel here. And one of them is called the global FX mute. And if you drag that out, drop it, and then hit OK, you now can use it. And what it does, if you click on it and it turns blue, all of the effects in your entire project on all the different timelines are muted. They don't render and they aren't used at all, which in many cases means you can play back your timeline much faster. Very useful, and you can click one click to turn it back. So you don't have to find the individual effects to turn them back on. You don't even have to put them on different layers. Very, very useful. Combine that with playback resolution is gonna get you pretty far. If you're not aware, there's also a lot of effects in Premiere that are accelerated by the graphics card. They call it GPU acceleration. And by default, it should be turned on. But I've discovered that on some projects, for any number of reasons, it can get disabled. And so if you're having weird slowdown issues and none of this other stuff is helping, if you go to your project settings, because this is a setting which is per project, not overall in Premiere, which is interesting. If you go File, Project Settings, General, You'll notice a setting here called video rendering and playback. Underneath it, it says renderer, and it should say Mercury playback engine GPU accelerated. And if you have an NVIDIA card, it'll say CUDA. If you have an AMD card, it'll say OpenCL. This is the one you usually want to have selected uh, and hit OK. In the more recent versions of Premiere and After Effects, this can have a pretty dramatic effect. The same setting can be changed within After Effects itself, file, project settings, Mercury GPU acceleration here as well. And then if none of that has worked and you're just still having to deal with huge footage that your computer just can't seem to be able to work with, then proxies are almost certainly the thing you should turn to next. Proxies are usually lower resolution, lower quality versions of a particular video file or asset that is able to be much more easily edited and worked with within Premiere, um, but all the while is associated with and connected with a much higher resolution or higher quality version of the footage. So there's kind of two methodologies when it comes to working with proxies. And the first one is to use Premiere's built-in proxy tool. And that works simply by going into Premiere. Um, you can find the footage that you want to turn into proxies. Uh, you can select just one piece of footage or you can shift select multiple. For this, I'm just gonna do this first one here. Right click on it, choose proxy, create proxies. There's a couple of options here, but usually you can just leave it at H.264, low resolution proxy. There's an option on whether or not you want the proxy file because it's going to create another version of the footage, another video file, where you want that to be stored. Most people in most situations just want it to be stored next to the original one and in a folder called proxies. Pretty easy for organization purposes. So you set that up, you hit OK. It's automatically going to open up Media Encoder, um, add it as a queue, and then automatically start rendering it. It shouldn't take very long because it's creating a version of the file that's like much lower bit rate, much smaller, and it's not gonna take up much space on your computer. Once it finishes, you can switch back to Premiere and it'll look like nothing has changed. But what's happened is that that piece of proxy footage is now associated with this file here. If you right click on this file and go to properties, you'll see that it now has two sections. It has the original file and its location and size, and then it has the proxy media and its location and size. So these two files are now associated with the same piece of media within Premiere. So how do you switch between the two? Well, same thing as before, we have to add a button that normally isn't there. So if you go into the button editor, you'll find this button called toggle proxies. Drag it out, drop it there, hit OK, and this piece of footage is actually the one at the very beginning here. So if I'm on this frame and I hit the toggle proxy button, you'll notice that it switches back and forth between the higher res version and then the lower quality, lower res version. So while the proxy button is toggled, all proxies across Premiere will be enabled. And then once you click, uh, click it again, they'll, they'll go back to the full resolution version. This makes it very easy to edit and mess with while you're working around in Premiere. But then when you're done and ready to render, you can use the high quality version. By default, when you render the timeline, it will not use the proxies. So you don't even have to remember to unclick that particular thing right before you start exporting. The other methodology is to just create a high quality MP4 before you even start setting up your project. If your final product is gonna be some kind of YouTube video or any kind of compressed piece of footage, 
then most of the time, as long as the intermediate files, the files that you're working with are higher quality than what you're ultimately gonna export, you won't notice that much of a difference. The last thing I wanna talk about is a feature that's brand new in the newest versions of Premiere and After Effects, and that is uh, GPU enhanced or GPU accelerated rendering and encoding. Previously, when you were exporting your project, it would be using pretty much entirely your processor and your, your GPU would just be sitting, sitting on the side, just kind of going, hey, I, I can help. And then Premiere was like, no, there's nothing you can do. In the newest updates, NVIDIA and Adobe work together. And if you have an NVIDIA card, a 10 series NVIDIA card or later, then you're able to take advantage of this. The way you enable this feature is to go to edit preferences and then media. And then right here at the bottom, it should be checked, enable hardware accelerated encoding and decoding. And if you're checking it for the first time, it's probably gonna require a restart. The same setting exists in Adobe Media Encoder. If you go to Edit, Preferences, Media, Enable Hardware Accelerated Encoding and Decoding. And like I said, you'll probably have to restart your computer. Once you have that enabled, if you send your project to be rendered, the default settings should now include this right here, where it's under Encoding Settings, it says Performance, and it should be set to Hardware Encoding. This is what will now take advantage of the GPU to speed up rendering. An important note is that if you have this setting down here, bitrate encoding set to VBR2 pass, it's going to throw a weird error at you and force you to select software encoding. So if you don't want that, uh, set that to VBR variable bitrate 1 pass and then change this to hardware encoding. From the stuff that I've seen online, there's no perceptible difference between doing it this way and doing it the old software encoding way and the file size is roughly the same as well. It really is just like a free increase in speed for setting this up this way. So theoretically, the more powerful of a graphics card you have, the faster this will be, which kind of undoes something I said in a previous video where I said that, and this just comes down to the way that those programs are coded. They're not actually taking advantage of that additional horsepower. Well, they're getting closer and closer to that, which is great to see. So that's gonna do it for our quick tips to improve editing performance in Premiere and After Effects. And if this is something you're interested in or if you learned anything from this video, then please give us a like. Feel free to comment if you have any questions or other ideas of your own, things that have improved performance in these programs. And thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, see you next time.